beautiful day for afternoon baseball here at the Big A. The Angels going for the series win against the Oakland A's. It is the fourth and final game of this series against the division rival. Before the game today, the Angels making the decision to put Howie Kendrick on the disabled list and have signed Russell Branya, the first baseman slash DH. And he is in uniform sporting number 39 and is active for today's game. Hi, everyone. We welcome you back in for Angels Baseball here on Fox Sports West. I'm Victor Rojas, along with my partner, Mark Gubuzen. And you know that Russell Brannion, over his career, has been able to hit the long ball. Last night, the Angels got some help via the long ball. They've been few and far between the 39th and 40th of the year for the Halos. But Torrey Hunter, now Berto Cayaspo, certainly made good use of it. Yeah, Victor, instant offense for the club. And Torrey Hunter's been hitting the ball so well on his homestand, hitting over 400, 409, as a matter of fact, with their second home run in his homestand. Now eight RBI for him, six straight games in which he drove in a run for the ball for the first time ever. Then Kayaspo with the back-to-back -back jack for the Angels. He's hitting the ball well. He's doing a good job as far as getting the ball in the inner half and driving away. He serves the ball in the left field, but he's going to have a test today against Brett Anderson with that good fastball slider combination. Well, last night, Urban Santana did a terrific job in picking up his second consecutive victory. This afternoon, it'll be Yoel Pinero towing the slab and trying to get that sinker going against the Oakland Athletics. Just about ready for baseball, so sit back and relax. We've got lineups and first pitch when we return. Introducing the Hyundai Assurance Trade-In Value Guarantee. See your Hyundai dealer for details. 
by CarMax. Now more than ever, the smart choice is CarMax. And by Shakey's. Win a pizza party for 10. Go to Shakey's.com. Crowd still filing in here to the Big A. Matinee baseball here in Southern California. Some clouds up above, but the sun shining brightly here as the Angels roll into this one. A game over 500, a half game back to the Texas Rangers who are idle this afternoon and this evening. So the Angels with an opportunity to tie the Rangers before heading out on the road. This is the lineup that Bob Guerin is running out. Coco Crisp leading things off at center. David DeJesus batting at the two spot in right field. Connor Jackson sees action at first base for the first time in this series. Josh Willingham's the cleanup hitter in left. Hideki Matsui after a night off last night back in the lineup, and he is serving as a DH. Kurt Suzuki also had the night off last night. He's doing the catching. Mark Ellis at second. Andy LaRoche back at third. Cliff Pennington will bat ninth and play shortstop. Taking on Yoel Pinheiro, who's got a 2-0 record and a 2.67 ERA in five starts this year. Yeah, 9-8 in his career against Oakland. Good ERA at 4-1-3. Has two CDs, including one shutout in his career against the He's just got to work down in the strike zone, pitch to contact, utilize that fastball, and then eventually start incorporating that curveball, slider, and then, his, of course, his split-finger fastball. Yeah, that last start that he had was against the Atlanta Braves. Gave up four earned runs, 11 hits and six and a third, as this one's bounced foul up the first baseline to start the ball game. And it wasn't his, his cleanest performance to date. He got the no decision in that one. He's had three no decisions with two victories. But going back to that Atlanta game, just didn't quite to have that, that sink to that fast. Almost like he was trying to muscle that sinker, kind of like Trevor Cahill did last night. I was night. just going to say the exact type of fastball there with Cahill, this lateral movement set of sink movement. That pitch just missed off the plates. One ball, one strike on Coco Crisp. Coco one for four last night, had a double and an RBI. Hitting 271 with a couple of home runs and 17 runs batted in. This one's pulled foul. And it is one ball and two strikes. Coco, a pretty good low ball hitter, and he's had some success against Pinheiro in 369 for 25, including one home run. We'll chase that all speed pitch in the dirt, though. Breaking ball found back over the screen. So the count remains at one ball, two strikes. The Angels coming off. The 4-1 win last night, Urban Santana picking up his third win of the year. He's now 3-4. and four. Urban threw a lot of pitches early on, but got through six innings, struck out six and allowed one run on six hits. Swing and a miss on the breaking pitch. Jeff Mathis will throw on the first to complete the strikeout. And there's the first out of the ballgame. Defensively, behind Pinheiro, We've got Reggie Willits in left, Peter Borges in center, Torrey Hunter is in right. In the infield, it's Kayasco, Ibar is Sturz, and Trumbo from third to first with Mathis doing the catch. And Kayasco should be very active with Pinero on the mound. If Pinero's got that sink working both away on the left, he's hit a lot of ground balls that way, and of course down and in on right-handed batters. And a nice job. Six errors so far this season, but he's made a lot of good plays on the backhand to be able to throw across the diamond, get some key outs. David De Jesus takes the strike. De Jesus last night two for four on the heels of the three hit game that he had in Tuesday night's ball game including the two home runs the 252 four home runs and 18 runs batted in as the count is even now at one ball one strike this is usually the spot that Derek Barton is batting in the first baseman who gets the afternoon off today Barton's been scuffling of late He's missing some pitches where you normally would be able to hit. Two balls and one strike. This is the third start for Pinheiro at home this year. Defeated the White Sox back on May the 10th. And as we just pointed out, took the no decision against the Braves on the 21st. This one's down the line and foul. Two balls, two strikes. Arrow starting the season on the disabled list. Got his first start on April the 30th down at St. Petersburg. No decision in that ball game. Got his first win at Boston. On Cinco de Mayo. Foul back. Still two balls, two strikes. Pretty good life in that fastball early on. You can see that Pinero, good movement. That went at 89 miles an hour.
Another 2-2, two -two, and this will chop her back toward the middle. Ibar can't get it. It's going to go into center field for a one-out base hit. Nero see in good fielding position. Try to be able to knock it down with his foot and then with the backhand on the glove as Ibar tries to slide across. Not going to be able to throw out Jesus anyhow, and if he makes that play. But Nero had been falling over to first base side of the mound, and it enabled him to be in position to be able to field that ground ball. First base runner of the ball game is De Jesus. Connor Jackson steps to the plate with one out. Jackson hitting 262 on the year with a home run and 12 runs batted in. Got in the game last night late as a pinch hitter. Was hit by a pitch by Fernando Rodney in the seventh. Got a base hit with two outs off Jordan Walden in the ninth. We got for a double play candidate here with that sinking fastball. Get a ground ball to the infielders. No balls, two strikes now. Back to back sliders. Going back out there again. Oh, two swing and a miss down goes Connor Jackson. Two outs. Boy, established that slider, a sharp slider early on. Pinero has a good curveball, too, almost like a cut fastball. Great location for that pitch. It's on top. Snaps it off. The true slider is almost thrown like, like you're throwing a football. Where not much action in your wrist is enough to be able to have that slight break on the on the pitch. Read fastball, but it's really just a sharp slider. Just a tiny little break to be able to get that swing and miss. So here's Josh Willingham with two outs. De Jesus at first. First pitch is down low. Willingham yesterday got to start in left field. Or pardon me, at DH. Sweeney got to start at left. Went 0 for 3, hitting 229, 7 home runs, 28 runs batted in. Two balls and no strikes. Two punch outs already for Pinero, not known to be a, a strikeout pitcher. The season high this year was five against the White Sox on May the 10th. It's also his longest downing of the season, seven and two thirds. 2 0 grounded up the line. That is a foul ball. Ayasco, nice effort. Fortunately, that ball is wide of the bag foul. It's two balls and one strike. Sinker down and in. And Willingham turns on it, just foul down the third baseline. Just past the base. Tough pitch to keep fair. Pitch right down the middle of ball three. Paul Nauert, the veteran, calling the balls and strikes. Kerwin Damley over at first base. Vic Carapazza is at second base. Corey Blazer over at third. Three one. Chopper right back to Pinero. Nice job there. That will end the inning. No runs to hit. A couple of strikeouts for Pinero. It's Durs and Ivar as well as a brave coming up for the Angels as we head to the bottom of the first.
Let's take a look at Mike Sosha's lineup for this afternoon's game. Game number 52 on the schedule. 26 and 25 are the Halos. It's Durst leading things off in second. Eric Ibar, the shortstop. Bobby Abreu is the DH. Tory Hunter in right. Alberto Cayasco in third. Mark Trumbo at first base. Peter Borges is in center. Jeff Mathis will bat eighth to do the catching. And Reggie Willis batting ninth. Playing left field. Taking on the 23-year-old from Stillwater, Oklahoma by the name of Brett Anderson. Brett Anderson is a very good young left-handed pitcher with above average stuff as far as the fastball slider. Good curveball changeup. Rush to fastball times up to 95 but settles 88-95 range. This one lofted down the right field line but fouled. And Meister quickly in the hole and no balls and two strikes. Mister is hitting 303 on the year. Three home runs and 13 runs batted in. He had the day off yesterday. Alexi Amarista got the start at second base. Did a terrific job. Two for three. Heck of a throw home on a relay. That gunned down Cliff Pennington. For the second down in the fifth inning last night. Well, that was textbook as far as hitting that ball off the wall from Peter Borges to Amarista. Did a throw to the plate. Able to be able to catch and make the tag. That's in time. It's one ball, two strikes. Anderson this year, 65 total innings, 63 hits allowed. 52 punch outs, 17 walks, but the walks starting to get up there over the last couple of starts as the Steelers rolls this one foul. So is the pitch count, too. It's getting up there quickly by the fifth or sixth inning. He's been around that 100 pitch range. 13 walks in his last five starts. He's had three games in which he's gone eight innings or more. Everything else has been in that five to six plus innings stretch with the pitch count getting up there. Foul back, got a fastball there. Cal remains at one ball, two strikes. Anderson got the start in San Francisco this past weekend, took the loss in five innings, gave up a run, struck out five, walked one. Faced the Angels on the 16th of May. Got a no decision as this one has bounced foul up the third baseline. A terrific at bat thus far for Sturz. Right now, it's a pretty tough pitch. That's a good slow curveball from Anderson. So that's messed that's been struggling his last five starts so that 0-3 mark. Mentioned the walks, allowed four home runs. No home runs allowed in his first five starts of the season. This one popped up. Connor Jackson drifting back. Will make the catch, and there is the first out. Let's take a look at the defense behind Anderson today. You've got Willingham at left, Crispin center, De Jesus in right. LaRoche and Pennington on the left side of the infield. Allison Jackson on the right side with Kurt Suzuki. Over Cal State Fullerton Chronic behind the plate. And Connor Jackson shifted from third base to first base. More familiar position for him. Fifth start of the year here for the A's at first base. He's played some outfield also. Very solid as far as the low throws and be able to pick them from the infielders. High bar at the plate. Takes outside. Eric was one for three yesterday. Got caught stealing for the first time this season. He had been perfect 12 for 12. Replay showed that he was clearly safe. As he lines one out to deep left field, Willingham moves back on it, makes the catch for round number two. So with two outs and nobody on, here comes Bobby Abreu. Bobby went over three yesterday, did draw a walk. His 37th of the year. Easily leading the team. Torrey second with 24. And Anderson delivers a strike in at the knees. A brave second in the American League and walks behind Jose Bautista. He's drawn 41. Gets jammed here. A little roller on the first base side. Anderson off the mound. And almost handcuffs Connor Jackson. And it's a 1-2-3 inning. One of the books here at the Big A. We have no score.
Angels baseball is brought to you by AT&T. By your Southern California Ford dealer. Visit us today and trade up to Ford. And by Jack in the Box. Right now at Jack in the Box, get the new bourbon barbecue steak grilled sandwich at participating restaurants. Top of the second with no score here. The Decky Matsui to lead things off against Pinheiro. Had a couple of strikeouts and a base hit in the first. First pitch is in there for a strike. Decky with the day off last night. One for seven in the series. But 0 for 4 Tuesday. Has the count even down him. At one ball, one strike. Mentioned in the open, the Angels signing Russell Brandian at the same time. Moving Howie Kendrick to the disabled list. It's retroactive to that last game in Seattle a week ago. I saw Howie out doing agility work in the outfield earlier today. Trying to test the hamstring, see if he'd be able to get back in there, but clearly it's going to be a little bit longer than anticipated. There were some rumors that the Angels were going to make a move after the ball game, but I think whatever that test was with Howie, obviously did not respond the way everyone had hoped. This one's fouled back. Two balls, two strikes. So Brandon, who was a free agent after being released by the Diamondbacks, is in uniform wearing number 39. Well, I like it, too, because he's you're talking about a guy with, what, 190 career home runs. Tremendous pop to all fields. Good strong swing, a good presence in the middle of your lineup can play a number of positions for you. Count remains with two balls, two strikes. Brandon at 35 years of age. 31 home runs with the Seattle Mariners just a couple of seasons ago. Another 2 2 lays off the breaking ball. Full count. Halos with three infielders on the right side with Matsui at the plate. You see Kurt Suzuki on deck. Matsui flips one out to left field, the lead off base hit. Suzuki coming to the play, and we'll take a look at our Hyundai key to the game. We got some David Bowie for you today, Victor. Space oddity. Ground control to Major Yoel. Ground ball after ground ball. The key for his success in getting win number 100. Staying down in the strike zone. The songwriters of America start getting upset with you to changing the, the Once lyrics. In a while, you just have to add a name or so in there just to make it fit. It worked last night. Yeah. It'll work today. Ground ball right here. Suzuki off last night. Takes a strike. Hitting 252 on the year, four home runs. 13 runs batted in. Suzuki went two for four Tuesday. Had one hit the opening game of the series Monday night. No one pitch. In tight, one ball, one strike. The Angels after the game today head out on the road. A six-game road trip, three in Minnesota against the Twins. Three against the Kansas City Royals. Showing bunt, drops a bunt up the third baseline. Mathis will let it roll, and it's going to stay fair. We know this field all too well. Once that ball starts going down the line, it's not going to roll foul. It'll always roll back into foul territory, into fair territory. See Mathis trying to see if he can work it and go foul, but stay right along that line, and then it works its way back into the fair territory. So Matsui with a base hit to left. Suzuki now with a bunch single. Puts two on with nobody out. Wonder if Ellis will be in a sacrifice mode here. Ellis has been scuffling this year. Went 0 for 4 last night. Overall hitting 202. He's got some big time numbers against Pinheiro. 395, 17 for 43, though. So you would almost hope he's up in this spot to bunt. Take the out. And you were right. Suzuki gave us the ground ball. 
just didn't control it. Yeah. But on the third base side, Kayasco is in. The throw to first is in time. The sacrifice works as Matsui advances to third. And Suzuki to second. So one out. Take a look at that bunt once again. Well, nice job. That's what you want to do, make the third baseman field the bunt, so he's going to be successful as far as advancing the base runners. Nice job by Mark Ellis. Well, there was a time when Oakland would never even consider bunting in a sacrifice scenario. His fourth of the year brings up Andy LaRoche, the third baseman. In field back, the Angels will give up the run for the out. Breaking ball is in for a strike. LaRoche has gotten the, the starting nod at third base the last three games. Played second in Monday's contest. This one chopped to third base. Kayasco with a backhand. Thought about coming home. Throws to first. And he gets the out. The run scores and Oakland takes a 1-0 lead. I think because of the backhand and being screened by Matsui running down the line, it would have been a difficult throw for him to throw the Jeff Mathis. So the ties decides to take the out. Tough hop also. Backhand, Matsui running down the line, running on the inside part of the line by the end. It would have been a very difficult throw. And then takes the out early in the game. You want to make sure you stay away from a big inning. Trust your offense is going to score some runs anyhow. LaRoche picks up his third RBI of the year. Two outs. Suzuki still at second base, and here's Cliff Pennington, the shortstop. Switch hitter takes a breaking ball for a called strike. Pennington was two for four yesterday. This is average a little bit to 245. Three home runs and 14 runs batted in. Oakland had four games under 500 at the start of the day, 23 and 27. Three back at Texas. Outside, it's one ball, one strike. Four games. That's it in the American League today. Kansas City and Baltimore. That game in the bottom of the 12th, tied at five. Boston. Second straight game. They've come out swinging the bats. They're leading Detroit 14 to 1. That game in the eighth. And they're starting to swing it now. Pennington chopping this one over to Kayasco. Across the diamond. That will end the inning. As Kayasco gets all three putouts, but Jarrell gives up a run. We hit at the bottom of the second. A's lead it 1 nothing. Oakland on top, 1 nothing here to start the bottom of the second. Brett Anderson had a 1 2 3 first. A couple of pop ups and a comebacker to the pitcher. Hunter Kayaspo and Trumbo here in the second. Torrey takes a breaking ball for a strike. 
Torrey won for three yesterday. The one, it was his sixth home run of the year. Put the Angels back on top, two to one. 27. Runs batted in as he takes another breaking ball in for a strike, and it's 0 and 2. He's had a good home stand so far, hitting 409 with those two home runs. Too well against Anderson, 455, 5 for 11 with one big fly. Torrey also with seven doubles, one triple on the year as he swings and pops this one up. Ellis, the second baseman, going out. Calls for it. Makes the catch for the first out. So one away as Alberto Cayaspo makes his way to the plate. Alberto also one for three with a home run. His third of the year, and it came on an 0-2 pitch from Trevor Cahill. Cahill gave up five runs all earned on ten hits. Alberto fouls this one back. There's no balls to strike. I asked for a pretty even split. Hit 290 versus left-handed pitching, 298 versus right-handed pitchers. No balls, two strikes. Breaking ball got him looking. And Anderson has the curveball going today. Fans of American League East rivals the New York Yankees coming to the Big A beginning on June the 3rd for a three-game set against the Halos. Make your plans to be part of the great weekend and purchase your tickets today by visiting the Angel Stadium ticket office or by logging on to angels.com. Strike out of chaos for the first for Brett Anderson. Anderson been very efficient in the strike zone so far. 16 strikes. That was a total of 19 pitches. No balls and a strike on Trumbo, who had a hit yesterday, one for four. He 245 with seven home runs and 21 runs batted in. One ball, one strike. Trumbo a little better feel for his curveball than it is for his slider so far. He's able to flip that curveball consistently in the strike zone. One or two. Anderson last year, seven and six record, a 2.80 ERA, 19 starts for the Athletics. Jumble pops this one up on the first base side. Jackson drifting over and will make the catch. Did he make it? He did. What a play by Connor Jackson over the railing. A 1-2-3 inning for Brett Anderson, helped out by some terrific defense there and hanging in there to make that play. Two of the books here at the Big A. Oakland's on top, 1-0.
the bottom of the second inning. The Angels have sent six men to the plate. Brett Anderson has retired all of them. We start to third with Oakland on top, one to nothing at the top of the order. At the plate is Coco. Takes the breaking pitch down low. Chris was strikeout victim in the first inning, so he's 0 for 1. Oakland getting their run in the second inning. Back to back hits, a sacrifice bunt, an RBI ground out. A double that Coco had yesterday, his 12th of the year, to go with the two home runs and the three triples. That's this one foul. That's one ball, two strikes. His 14 stolen bases on the year. Ranks him third in the American League. Done a nice job for for Oakland. Thus far has remained fairly healthy. He's playing a game number 43. That's always been a key for him. He's a dynamic offensive threat when he's healthy. And very good in the outfield also. Two two chopper over the mound tough play for is stirs with a bare hand of throw and even if Trumbull came up with it it's going to be an infield single. We can tell by Pinera's reaction once that got by him on the mound that was going to be an infield hit. He did all he could to be able to make that play. You see those body language no way at that point you're going to be able to get Coco even though Pinero fooled him out in front. Just too quick going down the line. Now the possibility of a stolen base threat here with 14 stolen bases on the season for Coco, but Pinero very quick to the plate and over the first base. The infield single, the fourth hit for Oakland in this game. De Jesus has a base hit. Showing butt takes down low for ball one. Kayasco is playing just behind, behind the bag at third base. Now steps in near the cut of the grass at third with that fake bunt attempt by De Jesus. Near with one pickoff so far this season. Only allowed one stolen base against him. Jeff Mathis behind the plate has thrown out three of 23 would be base dealers. Quick throw over and Coco's back. Coco with those 14 stolen bases has been caught five times. Oakland overall with a total of 35 stolen bases on the year. That's good for seventh in the American League. This one's pulled and Trumbo's got it. Throws to second base. The relay back to first. 3-6-3 three, three, double play. An outstanding reaction by Trumbo. Ball was scolded right at him. Let's make it like a goalie making a save. Good throw over to short. Ibar back for a 3 6 3 double play. Love the fact that Trumbo never bothered to look at Coco Chris, thus, not taking his eye on the, the ultimate prize, that double play. Sometimes, especially for a young first baseman, you get caught up in looking at the runner. Go to the bag, and all of a sudden the force play is no longer in effect. You're in a rundown with Coco Crisp. Yeah, because if you waste any time thinking about that base runner, you're not going to get the double play. You're exactly right, Victor. That's why when you look at Trumbo, he's he's transitioned very well into that first base position. Connor Jackson taking a huge hack there. It's no balls, two strikes. Jackson a strikeout victim in the first, so he's 0 for 1. Paul Nowers says Jackson did not go. It's a one ball, two strike count. Epineros one two. Jackson rolls over this one. kayaspo has got it on two hops. Battle in the inning. Nice double play started by Mark Trumbo. We head to the bottom of the third with Oakland still on top, one nothing.
third. Looking for that first base runner against left-hander Brett Anderson. He's retired the first six in a row, including one strikeout. Borges, Mathis, and Willits here in the third. Peter takes the off-speed pitch upstairs. One ball, no strikes. Borges had a bunt single yesterday as the leadoff man. Pardon me, that was a, a chopper. He had the bunt single two nights ago. Tries to bunt his way on here. Comes up empty. It's one ball, one strike. Picking up his 11th RBI with that ground out. At that point in the game, it put the Angels up one to nothing. Oakland tied it in the fifth. But the Angels got three in the fifth. This one bounced over to Jackson on the backhand. And Borges is the first out here in the third. Fans, follow the Angels at foxsportswest.com slash angels. You can log on and catch Joe McDonald's one-on-one -on -one with Mike Sosha. These are the results from the Angels poll question, which is your favorite American League West rivalry. Angels-Rangers at 61%. The A's at 32%. The Mariners at 7%. Yeah, they have that about right there, especially the way Texas has played in the recent time. But Oakland and the Angels have battled it out for quite some time as far as pretty much even up in the series. Jeff Mathis takes a fastball for a strike. Mathis a two for four game a couple of nights ago, a couple of RBIs, pulls this one foul. There's no balls, two strikes. Jeff hitting 202 all the year with a home run. At Seven runs batted in. It's only the sixth ball that Brett Anderson has thrown in this game. 29 pitches, 23 strikes. Mathis. Skies went down the right field line. Long run for Ellis De Jesus and Jackson De Jesus. With the glasses gleaming, makes the catch. For out number two. We well, can tell that Anderson has slowed down his delivery. At times, can be pretty hyper on the mound, falling through his mechanics. But today, to stand right over that front leg very effectively. Between starts here with the bullpen session with pitching coach Ron Romantic, just working on getting back to his normal tempo, not rushing it too quick. Reggie Willits steps up with two outs and nobody on. Picked up his first hit of the season last night. It was a double. Picked up an RBI. A one. One ball, one strike. LaRoche at third and Jackson at first, both playing in in case Willits decides to drop one down. Baltimore finally beat Kansas City six to five in extra innings and 14 to one game in Detroit for rain delay. That's exactly That's what you want if you're the Tigers. Oh, there's no doubt. Do you still have a real good chance to get back in that ball game at some point down by 13? <laughs> <laughs> two two bouncer toward the middle. Ellis has got it to the backhand and Willis. Is the third out. Nine up and nine down for Brett Anderson. We're through three. Oakland's on top one nothing.
you a question. Who owns the Angels record for consecutive games with an RBI? No, I go with Don Baylor. Oh, Don Baylor, huh? Yep. Apparently Paul now at the home plate umpire had something in his eye. Got it taken care of. Oakland leading it one to nothing as we start this fourth inning. Josh Willingham, Hideki Matsui, and Kurt Suzuki here in the fourth. I'm going to go Garrett Anderson. Good one. Willingham hit a bouncer back to Pinheiro to end the first inning, so he's 0 for 1. First pitch is a strike. And on the outside corner. Pinheiro with a couple of strikeouts, both coming in the first inning, no walks. Four hits allowed. One each in the first and third innings, two in the second. That pitch missed inside, apparently. It's one ball, one strike. Paul Nauer strikes in a little, little odd here in the early going. This one lifted in the air to shallow right, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. So a flare single for Willingham. The leadoff man is on board for Oakland. Third straight inning that has occurred. You know, a frustrating thing too, if you're on the mound, you make a good pitch like that, and the guy flares it in the outfield against you. And on the other side, Willingham fought off a pretty tough pitch. Still, when you make that quality pitch, you you hope to get an out out of it. Instead, it's going to be a base hit, and you put yourself in position now with Matsui up, but very difficult out. Matsui had a base at the left field in the second inning, so he's one for one. Scored the A's run on that ground out by LaRoche. It's at 2.35 average off the slow start. A little bit of a slow start for the Angels last year. We we're settling in with a 274 average and 21 home runs and 84 runs batted in. Willingham takes off the hit and run is on. This one sliced down the left field line and going foul. One ball, one strike as Willingham heads back to first. Willingham with three stolen bases so far this year was caught once. That's Sui. The guy's going to make some contact, so it's a, a play that Bob Guerin decided to give it a shot at it to stay away from a potential double play ball. Snap throw to first, a high throw. Nice job by Trumbo. Matsui ahead of the count now, two balls and one strike. He's high enough. Might have had a shot at it, a little lower throw, but the reality is you're trying to keep him close at first. Just in case he ventures off a little bit too far away to try to get a better secondary lead. Not a very big lead for Willingham at first base. 2-1. Outside. Three balls and a strike. This is the ninth major league season for Hideki Matsui. And he spent the bulk of his career with the Yumiuri Giants in Japan before signing with the Yankees in 03. A 3-1. Lifted in the air toward right center field. Torrey Hunter moving to his right. Calls off Borges, makes the catch. Willian heads back to first. One out. Fans, the Halos host the Tampa Bay Rays on Tuesday, June the 7th at 7.05. All fans in attendance will receive an Angels newsboy hat courtesy of FS West. 
Make your plans to visit the Big A and purchase your tickets at the Angel Stadium ticket office or at angels.com. That's the same style hat that our statistician Norm Peters used to wear as a kid when he was selling newspaper on the corner in Chicago. Someone flipped him a nickel, he would bite that nickel, make sure it was solid. Norm's been around a long time. One of the best. I think Norm rode in the first Ford Model T. Entering his first year of college. <laughs> One of the best. Uh, there's no question about it. Suzuki shooting one to right. That'll hang up for Torrey. Two outs. Willingham remains at first. You see the approach from Lopen is trying to go away. A lot of fastballs, sinkers on the outside part of the plate. A good movement on there from Pinheiro. So two outs, Ellis at the plate. He had a sacrifice spot in the second, his fourth of the year. I think he wanted to swing. Guessing fastball? Yeah. In his guessing, mind. Yeah, he was guessing yeah. that sinking fastball, but then all of a sudden, oh, no, it was a breaking pitch. Good numbers in his career against Pinheiro's. Gooby pointed out in that first plate appearance. It's one of those things if you're a manager caught up in that first and second was no outs and Ellis has been struggling but great numbers against the particular pitcher you, you think okay you're going to give up that out for a sacrifice bump but it kept you away from a potential big inning although they did score the one run. Took quick throws over to make sure Willingham was paying attention. Yeah, nearly 400. That's a lot of at-bats, too. It's not simply go 10 at-bats. That's 43 at-bats against them. On the outside corner. It is 0-2. You mentioned the approach by Oakland hitters going out toward right field as a right-handed batter. We haven't seen Paul Nauer really establish the inside part of the plate as far as the strike zone is concerned. So Pinheiro living out there, and it looks like the A's taking advantage of it if that's where he has to pitch to throw strikes. This one's flipped into shallow right field. Going to be a tough play for Torrey and that's going to fall in there. Willingham all the way to third. On an 0-2 count, Ellis flips one into right field for a base hit. Runners at the corners here for Oakland. Up one nothing and two outs. LaRoche coming up. He said, yeah, they're looking away, hitting the ball. If you're not going to be called fastballs in, going to be more apt to stay away breaking ball here a pretty good one too down and away but he's looking out on the outer half able to fight that all for a base hit if you're not getting that fastball in, especially for Pinheiro who has that good running action inside on right-handed batters and not getting that pitch you're more apt to stay away whether it be your your two seamers starting off to play the catch a corner or a slider or curveball in the outer half the hardest hit ball today was off the bat of David De Jesus and that was a double play that was started by Mark Trumbull Roach pops one up on the first base side. This will land in the seats for strike one. The Roach picked up the RBI on the ground out. A little dribble up the third base line to Kayas, but did a nice job making the play onto the backhand. He thought about throwing home to get Matsuri, but decided to take the out instead. Would have been a tough play. With the base runner running inside the line. This one pulled, and that is a fair ball. Almost took out Blazer. One run is in. Being waved around is Ellis. He's going to score, and it's a two RBI double, three nothing Oakland. What is turn on that pitch inside?
Corey Blazer is just trying to get out of the way. That ball right down the line at him. So we're able to make the call. And it's it went by the base fair. Yep. Seventh hit allowed by Pinheiro. Two out rally for Oakland. 0-2 flare by Ellis. Now that rip double by LaRoche, his sixth double of the year. A three RBI game. So Cliff Pennington will step to the plate. Roach came into this ball game with two runs batted in his last 35 games. He has surpassed that here this afternoon. A one. Out toward right center field. Forges will pull back and let that one fall in there. And it's all four. Nothing openly. Pennington with a base hit and an RBI. Two-seam fastball once again. That thigh high wants that ball down below the knees. Pennington hits that ball in the center field for a base hit. Trying to limit the damage. Pennington certainly a stolen base threat with five on the season. Three straight, two out hits. Here's Coco Crisp. Infield base hit in the third inning, a one for two game. Pulls this one to the right side as Sturis is there. And the inning finally comes to an end. Oakland scores three times. They do it on four hits and leave a man off. We head to the bottom of the fourth. The Halo's down 4 nothing. by Hawaiian Gardens Casino. Get your game on by El Pollo Loco. Get into El Pollo Loco today and try our delicious Baja-style fish tacos with classic Baja or spicy avocado sauce only at El Pollo Loco. And by Time Warner Cable. Uphill climb for the Angels here in the fourth. Down a 4 nothing against Brett Anderson, who's been perfect through the first three innings, including a strikeout. Facing his Sturis Ivar and Abreu here in the fourth inning. Meiser popped out after a long at bat in the first. Go for one. Chopper back to Anderson. And there's out number one. Go back to our AT&T trivia question. About consecutive streaks. How about the Angels' record for consecutive games with an RBI? Gary Anderson. Good call. 12 GA. Game, 2007. Flat out guess. Talk about a smooth hitter. Line drive machine. Ibar 
takes down low, and it's one ball, no strikes. I mean, that's an inner half fastball that Paul Nauert is not calling. It wasn't off by a lot. It's going to force you to pitch away. Calls that one. And evens the count of one ball, one strike. Ibar. That went well out to left field, but it was caught by Willingham in the first inning. Over one day this far. Takes a strike. It's one and two. Forty pitches thrown by Anderson. Thirty-one strikes. Pulled foul. Count remains at one ball, two strikes. Kind of a reminiscent of what Josh Appen did. Not quite as good a ratio as Anderson has today as far as strikes versus balls, but kind of the same type of approach coming in, pumping in strikes. With a lot of them. A much slower tempo for him as far as not rushing his mechanics as compared to the last time we saw Anderson up in, in Oakland. He gave up five. Hits three earned runs, four walks in that ball game, and no decision. Two balls, two strikes. Anderson has not had a three-ball count this afternoon. You Good see, job. It, and it happens. Anderson has not allowed a base runner this afternoon. Like the, I like the <laughs> effort. Hey, whatever works, man. Yes. Bobby Abreu on deck. 3 2, hit out to left field. Willingham will play it on a hop. First man to reach. Thank you very much. My job here is now complete. Gooby, I turn it over to you. Well, you know what? He hasn't allowed a home run to a left handed batter. You can say that one. With Bobby coming up. Challenged. Ivar with a fastball, and Ivar did a nice job of staying low on the swing and hit that ball in the left field. Getting that first base hit. Abreu steps up. He got jammed in that first inning. A little dribbler between the mound and the first baseline that Anderson picked up and fired a rocket over to Connor Jackson. You got to be careful with Anderson as far as his pickoff move. Pretty good one. Very quick. Twelve stolen bases for Ibar. He's been caught stealing once. That was last night. And Bobby takes a strike. Yeah, it was five pickoffs already this year. Last season had four. When you mix in with Dallas Braden, how effective he is with the pickoff. One of the better moves in the game from Oakland, especially from the left-hand side. That wasn't the A move over the first. It's the B or C move. Just showing that one. He is a quicker move. The JV move. Instead, think, wow, he doesn't have a good move after all. A one pitch on the outside corner, two and two. Well, Bobby's having a tough time. He almost open up, bound out of the way, trying to keep that front hip. Tucked in long enough to be able to hit the ball. You see that hip opening up. Allows that outside corner to be wide open for Anderson. Anderson originally a second round pick at the Diamondbacks in 2006. Part of a huge trade between Oakland and the D backs. Came over with Dana Evelyn, Greg Smith, Chris Carter, Aaron Cunningham, and Carlos Gonzalez. Bobby goes down swinging for round number two. And that was an exchange for Dan Heron and Connor Roberts. Strikeout of Abreu, the second for Anderson. 
two outs here at the fourth. Brings up Torrey Hunter. Torrey popped out to Mark Ellis in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. Breaking ball. Loops this one out to shallow right. Here comes De Jesus. Then it comes to an end. The Angels get their face. First, first base runner. They leave him stranded at first. Through four. Oakland's on top for nothing. Messi and Barcelona battle Wayne Rooney and Manchester United at historic Wembley Stadium. Don't miss two of soccer's greatest teams to line in the UA for Champions League final Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific in high definition, only on Fox. Victor Rojas along with Michael Flatley of Riverdance is my partner. And Pinera <laughs> delivers outside for ball one. 4 nothing Oakland here in the fifth. They're ready for that big game. Yep. Gooby likes to kind of mime what I'm reading as far as the rage concerned. So I guess that's probably the He's best kicking thing. the soccer ball yeah. around. Get loose. We do a NASCAR read. You you're driving the car. I'm always turning left. Always turning left. No turn signal either. Nope. Darrell falls behind here on David De Jesus. Two balls and one strike. De Jesus, Jackson, and Willingham here in the fifth. Big swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. Two two breaking ball downstairs full count Oakland with four hits in the fourth inning that four hits combined through the first three they got one in the second three in the fourth to take this four nothing lead Nero getting ready to throw his 70th pitch of the afternoon they shoot out towards center field Borges is there one out first time the leadoff man's been retired by Pinero since that first inning strike out of Coco Chris. It makes it so much more difficult for a pitcher when you have that leadoff base runner because then you've got the possibility of a steal, a hit and run, a potential bunt. Taking your focus away from the hitter itself, you got to worry about the base runner. That's why Mike Butcher always preaches to always pitches, whether starters or bullpen guys, getting that first guy out of the inning. 
Connor Jackson lines with a left field on the very first pitch of his at bat. And he is on board with a one out base hit. He's one for three. Had struck out and grounded out of his first two at bats. Now every starter for Oakland has a base hit. Nine total hits. All nine of the hits, eight of the nine hits, I should say, singles. One extra base hit. That was a double by LaRoche. Kind of unusual when you look at that. You're in the fifth inning. Everybody in that starting lineup for Oakland with a base hit, but no one has more than that one. Rich Thompson now up. Good pitch in on the hands. One ball, one strike count. Very good movement on that fastball. The way yeah. Anderson has looked today for Oakland, too. Got to keep it right here to 4 0 deficit. Yeah, you can't allow any more runs. He's thrown strike after strike. He's had a really good curveball today. Willingham now with the two ball one strike count. We can see it right away from the get go for him. Just had good feel for all his pitches so far. But you got to try to keep it close. Keep the pressure on him. Give that doubt in his mind. He's lost his last three decisions and five starts. Strike on the inside corner evens account. That'll always come back into place so if you keep it close get some base runners get a run across all of a sudden you start thinking on the mound that boy I've not pitched real well of late and all of a sudden you start making some mistakes but you have to keep it close if you're Pinero right now. Two two. Oh. Called strike three on the inside corner Willingham doesn't like to call. That is out number two. Like a backup slider. It was meant to be in the outside corner, got underneath with his wrist, but still hits the plate with that breaking pitch. Good job by Mathis framing that ball to give Nauert a better look at it. So Jackson still over at first, two outs, and here's Hideki Matsui. Matsui is singled, hit a fly ball to right. Pinero's tempo a little, a little slower today than grown accustomed to seeing. Two balls and no strikes. They use it extremely fast. Doesn't waste time in between pitches. And we've seen some fastballs with that lateral movement like we saw out of Tre Trevor Cahill last night for Oakland. Not as much sync, but movement, but not going down in the strike zone as consistently as they both want. Three balls and no strikes. Visit to the mound is Kurt Suzuki hanging out on deck. And Matsui will be swinging here 3 0. Halo's right down that stretch of 20 consecutive games. Matter of fact, the road trip that is upcoming will conclude those 20 consecutive games. The off day next Thursday. Tomorrow night, beginning a three game set in Minnesota against the Twins. Three and one. Tyler Chadwood getting a start tomorrow night, going up against Scott Baker. Jared Weaver, Saturday. 
It's Francisco Liriano, then Dan Heron on Sunday against Carl Pavano. Liriano is one of the no-hitters so far this year. We have two punch outs in that game. Full count now. Yep. Had some walks. Six walks, was it? Hey, no hitter's a no hitter. I'm not arguing. I know other people mentioned it was uh, not quite as good as a no hitter, but no hitter's a no hitter. I don't care if you walk 10. Those that say it's not a no hitter have never put on a uniform. Here's the 3 2. So he fouls it back. So he had a pretty good cut at that pitch. Connor Jackson off of the pitch with two outs here in the fifth inning and a 3 2 count on Matsu. Out toward left center field. Reggie Willits moves over. Makes a catch. That'll end the inning. No runs a hit. One left on for Oakland. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning. A's on top for nothing. And three in the fourth to take this four nothing lead and Brett Anderson has been on cruise control a couple of strikeouts no walks one hit allowed and that was to Eric Ibar in the fourth Ibar remains stranded at first base it'll be Kiaspo Trumbo and Borges here against the left hander turns over the changeup this is outside it's one ball no strikes Alberto struck out looking in the second inning 0 for one this far ahead of the count of two balls and no strikes Oakland with four runs on nine hits. No errors. They've left four guys on base. The Angels no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. Foul back. It's two and one. Alberto perhaps chasing what would have been ball three. At this point down four nothing. You need base runners any way you can get on, whether it's a base hit or a walk. Three balls and one strike. So now if you're Alberto, you're looking for something you can hit hard up the middle or you take it if it's out of the strike zone. Don't help him out. Lead off walk. Man is on board. That'll bring up Mark Trumbo. Fans of the 1980s retro uniforms worn by the Halos during the previous flashback Fridays are now available for you to own. Log on angels.com. Place your bid on game views. Uniforms, hats, and helmets for players such as Tori, Jared, and everybody else. That wore the uniforms. A portion of the proceeds benefit the Angels Baseball Foundation. 
First walk of the game for Brett Anderson puts a man on board. Jumbo for one he popped out. As he looks at a fastball away. It's one ball, no strikes. Boy, Coco is playing pretty deep in center field, but Willingham is playing very shallow and left. Tells you the more likely with that kind of defense arrangement, you're going to pitch away. One 0 pitch. Jumbo grounds one toward the hole. Pennington has it. Flips to Ellis for one. The relay to first is not in time. The foot coming off the back for Connor Jackson. But they get the lead runner for the first out. Trouble reaches on the fielder's choice. And here comes Peter Boyd. Nice play by Pennington to the glove side. Backhand. Strong throw. And Ellis, good takeout by Kayaspo at second. Prevented that good throw to the first base. Bob Guerin hadn't even noticed him, actually. He came out to argue with Kerwin Danley at first base. To no avail. Lord just over one. He grounded out to Connor Jackson, the first base, because he fouls this one back. No balls in the strike. Roach in on the grass at third base. Jackson holding Trumbo at first base. Trumbo's got a pretty good lead over there. Breaking pitch on the outside corner. No balls, two strikes now on Borges. O2. Chase that fastball to try to get to. Lays off of it. One ball, two strikes. Peter's been scuffling in the month of May. 165 batting average, five for his last 51. Dribbler up the first base line. Seems to be guessing a little bit too much at the plate. At times, almost look like he's looking for a break of balls and misses fastballs and just vice versa looks for, you know, he's getting some good fastballs, especially early in the counts, taking them. But he's got to fight his way back and pitches ahead of the counties they're going to expand the strike zone against him so he's got to jump on that first pitch fastball if it's in a spot where he could do hit it hard pulled on that breaking pitch got a piece of it Peter leads the majors with six bunt singles leads the American League with five triples Got 12 total infield hits. That's third in Major League Baseball. Shoots this one toward the middle. Ellis is there. Flips to Pennington. The relay to first is in time. Winning ending double play. Turned by the Athletics. Five of the books here at the Big A. Oakland still on top for nothing.
Coors Light freeze cam. Connor Jackson to feel with a dugout reaches over, makes a great play all the way out, and makes an outstanding catch with some help from his teammates to keep him falling into that dugout. That was our Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. Top of the sixth inning, four nothing Oakland. Kurt Suzuki, Mark Ellis, Andy LaRoche, six, seven, and eight. Do up for the green and gold. They have nine hits. Suzuki takes a breaking ball. It's one ball, no strikes. This one hit in the air to deep left field. Willett's going back onto the warning track. Will make the catch in those on number one. One out, nobody on for Mark Ellis. A little sacrifice, but in the second, a single with a run scored. In the fourth, it was Ellis who started that little two out rally. A no two pitch, got a breaking ball off the end of the bat and flared it into right. LaRoach then followed up with a two RBI double. Pennington with an RBI single. Ellis pulls one down the left field line, and that is foul. Out in front of it. It's a one ball, two strike count. Other action in Major League Baseball, a couple of National League games ongoing. Matter of fact, they, they made a final of that Boston Detroit game, 14 to 1. Done. White Sox in Toronto later tonight, but the National League. Philadelphia beat Cincinnati 10 to 4. It's pretty good, 10 runs after that 19 inning affair. As this one is shot to right field. Torrey coming on, makes the running catch. And there are two outs. How about Wilson Valdez picking up the win in relief? Position player getting the win on the hill. Jojo Reyes of the Blue Jays sitting there going, hey, what do I have to do? <laughs> what is it, 28 consecutive starts? Yeah, that's not a good feeling. Can't really say hang with him. No, no, that's too hard to say that with 28 games without a W. So easy that Wilson Valdez could do. Now, the last one was Brett Main of the Colorado Rockies, the last position player to get a victory on the mound. Couldn't tell you. I know he did get one. I don't know if that was the last one prior to that. Well, he had a shutdown 19. Yep. Yeah. Sure, it was an assortment of off speed pitches. Yeah. Cubs leading the Mets 7 2 in the seventh. Florida and the Giants just underway. The Roach bouncing one toward the hole at short. High bar on the first. And there's the second. Okay, first 1 2 3 inning for Pinheiro. He gave him a base hit in the first inning. 4 0 Oakland. We head to the bottom of the sixth.
celebrating 70 years of legendary heritage. Nice shot of the beach. Halo's down for nothing. One hit allowed by Brett Anderson. The Angels have had three base runners. A base hit, a walk, and then, of course, Strumble reached on a fielder's choice. Jeff Mathis takes down low, and it's one ball, no strikes. One ball, one strike. Jeff had a fly ball to right field in the third inning. So he is 0 for 1. Well, he's had great break on that curveball today, Anderson. Very good command as far as the strike zone with that pitch. Anderson thus far pitching into the sixth inning with one hit allowed. Two strikeouts, one walk. One, two. Jeff Browns went sharply to short. Pennington will retire. The Angels catcher, and there's out number one. Fans, are you looking to entertain a large group for the U2 concert at the Big A on June 17th or 18th? Are you giving? Yep. Hand raised. There's a wide variety of suite locations and sizes available for either concert date. For more information or to reserve your U2 suite, call 714 940 2094 today. Hopefully Bono doesn't come down with a back problem again this year. Uh, he's ready to go. Reggie Willits takes down low. Reggie 0 for 1. He grounded out to second base his first time up. Two balls and no strikes. I'm saying on the American Idol final. Did you DVDR that last night? Uh, you know what I did, but I had, didn't get around to watch it. No? No. Can we tell you who won? No. Because I don't know. I think I know who won, though. But I, I don't. It's one of two. <laughs> really? Yeah. A country singer. I don't know his name, though. They're both country singers. They both are? <laughs> well, then I'm definitely right on the nose. Two balls, two strikes on Reggie. Speaking of country, nice hat. There's a sweet hat. Warm afternoon here. Full count. The original cowboy. Top of the order, Meister is Sturris on deck. Shot foul. Merle Haggard still here? Or he gone? He was here the other day. He's hanging out, watching the game. Concert the next day. Another 3-2. Reggie draws the walk with one out here in the sixth inning. The Sturris comes to the plate, 0 for 2. He's popped out. Gonna come back into the mound. Pretty short lead at first for Reggie. As this one's pulled down the left field line, that's a base hit. Going into the corner, Reggie rounding second, heading to third. Willingham plays the carom cleanly and stopping at third is Reggie Willits. It's a double for Meister Asturias. And the first time today that the Angels have had a man reach at least the second base. Now they've got second and third with one out and Ibar coming to the plate. Well, that walk to Willits, good to bat by him. And then Meiser once again coming through with a clutch hit. Fastball didn't get in there quite as much as Anderson wanted. Allowed Meiser to get the good part of the bat on the baseball. Dino Eva holding up Wilts. Right decision here when you're down by four. Don't want to take a chance there. Anderson working from the full windup here. Ibar takes high. Eric one for two. Had a base hit in the fourth inning. Erasing the, the perfection that Brett Anderson had been featuring early on in the game. That looked a little bit high for... 
some reason, Paul Nauer calls it a strike. It's one and one. Well, that's even high where the catcher catches it, too. Suzuki crossing the plate. That's above the letters. Two balls and one strike. Maybe a strike on Kareem, but not on Eric. <laughs> no doubt. Well, it's a third. It stirs at second. Here's a 2 1. Swing and a miss. Challenge him with a fastball. Two balls, two strikes. Meister's double is 15th for the year. Lifted in the air to left. Not hit very deep. Willingham coming on. Calls off Pennington. Makes the catch. Two outs. It's going to be up to Bobby Abreu to get the job done here with two outs and runners at second and third. Bobby's got to look away and hit the ball to left field. Bobby has been cheating in on the inside part of the plate. Anderson got in his kitchen that first at bat and that second at bat. You can clearly see that Abreu was looking for that fastball in again. And all he got was. Bunch of breaking balls down and away. Missed up high. That's one ball, no strikes. Seventy nine pitches thrown by Brett Anderson. Fifty four for strikes. There's that breaking pitch, one and one. Boy, same pattern. Curveball, curveball again, this time in the strike zone. Let me try to sneak a fastball by him here. Bobby's got to be ready for that one. Bobby slices one over to third. LaRoche smothers it, gets up, throws over to first. And Abreu is retired for the third out. The Angels leave runners at second and third base. We've played six here at the Big A. It is four nothing Oakland. Nothing. The Angels had an opportunity to scratch across the run, but couldn't get one. Pinheiro back out there after his first one, two, three inning in the sixth inning. He delivers down low to Cliff Pennington. Oakland setting up nine, one, and two. Pennington, Crisp, and De Jesus.
Pennington with an RBI single that came in the fourth. One for two game. Tries to bunt his way on and that's going to be an infield base hit unless it rolls foul. And it doesn't. We've talked about this before. Alberto is always one of those guys that plays deep at third. And unless someone shows one brings him in, he almost forces the issue. And we've seen that a couple of times already in this series, second time in the game. Especially with Pennington and his speed. You would think you're going to play up anyhow. Now with a speed of first base, stolen base threat. Coco takes a breaking ball low. One for three game for Chris. Had a base hit in the third inning. Rich Thompson was up earlier in this game. Rich is up and loosening once again here. In the seventh inning, Pinero at 96 pitches. There's the Australian. They're over. Pennington leaning a little bit. Yeah, it's a good count to go. Pretty much taking the pitch out of way, at least in Oakland's mind. That Mike Sosha wouldn't do that, although we've seen Sosha put the pitch on on after being behind 1 0. He trusts his pitcher enough to throw strikes after that in case he's wrong on the decision. And Nero falls behind at two balls and no strikes. That bunt single by Pennington, the tenth hit in the afternoon for Oakland. Pennington, the only guy to have multiple hits. Hit in the air down on the left field side. Edgy Willets drifting to his right. Makes the catch, and there is out. Number one. And the Chevy Diamond and Dreams contest is back. Go to ChevyBaseball.com to enter for a chance for your community to win a field makeover. And you could win a new Chevrolet. No purchase necessary. Open to legal U.S. residents 18 and over. The contest ends May 31st. Log on to ChevyBaseball.com for more details. One out, one on. Here's David DeJesus. One for three game for DeJesus. They sit back in the first, a double play ball in the third, and a fly ball to center in the fifth. Not a very big lead for Pennington at first base. It's a fastball that misses down and away. He's trying to figure out Pinero out. He's not doing a real good job of getting a good read because Pinero's doing a great job as far as holding the baseball. Has the ability to step off, pitch a rubber, then look him back. Quick footwork. Another quick throw over there. Pennington decided to go in standing up, made it closer than it needed to be. Mentioned the Angels heading off to Minneapolis after the game today. Oakland goes home. Athletics will be hosting the Baltimore Orioles over the weekend. Texas is at home. They're off today, but they'll have the Kansas City Royals in town starting tomorrow night. And Seattle also at home. They've got the Yankees tomorrow night. DeJesus slaps one to left field. And there's a base hit. Pennington advances to second. 11 hits now in this ball game. Runners at first and second with one out. Connor Jackson do up and that's going to be it, it appears for Pinero. 
Rich Thompson will be coming into the ball game with a pitching change here the seventh. The Angels down by the score of four to nothing Oakland looking to tack on some more with just one out here in this frame. A pitching change brings in Rich Thompson taking over for you, El Pinero. Are in and out, who's in, who's out. Thompson on the air now pitching in his 17th game, a one and two mark at 2.45 ERA. 22 innings, 17 hits, 25 strikeouts, and seven walks. And Rich has done a nice job when he gets ahead with that two seam fastball. His curveball has been outstanding. And getting that confidence back as far as attacking the strike zone, trusting the stuff, trust the movement. First appearance for Rich in Saturday's game against the Atlanta Braves. But one inning, struck out a man, gave up a hit. Aces Jackson here with runners at first and second and one out. Pitch is down low. One ball, no strikes. Rich faced the A's last week in Oakland and struggled with his control. But bounce back Saturday did a nice job against the Braves. Falls behind here, two balls and no strikes. Again, can't afford to give up any more runs here. Got to try to keep it that four nothing deficit. Over through the first fastball, that breaking pitch over through that one. Connor Jackson today, one for three with a base hit, a strikeout, and a ground up. Pinero for the second straight start, giving up 11 hits. Responsible for the two guys on base. Two balls and one strike. If you're a sinker ball pitcher, you're going to give up your share of hits. A number of those were just dribblers or flares into the outfield against him today. Pennington at second base to Jesus at first. Jackson fouls this one back. Almost a, a fine play by a fan sitting in the club level seats. Two two. Called strike three. Jackson knew it. Two outs. So that's that nasty curveball. Rich Thompson stayed on top of that 12 to 6 break. 
That is nasty. When he can establish, like I said, establish that fastball, throw for strikes, he can finish off many hitter with that good curveball. Two outs, two on now for Josh Willingham, the left fielder. One for three today with a single and a run scored. Foul off to the right. The Angels in the bottom of the seventh inning have Torrey Hunter, Alberto Cayasco, and Mark Trumbo do up. Brett Anderson's only thrown 81 pitches. Here's the 0-1 to Willingham. He went around. No balls, two strikes. Chance now to expand the strike zone. You can swing at your pitch. You can go upstairs above the letters or you can bounce a breaking pitch. Oh, two. Missed inside. One ball, two strikes. <laughs> Trying to get out of the seventh thing. One two breaking ball got him looking down goes Willingham and Rich Thompson gets back to back punch out seventh inning stretch time here at the big A the Angels down four nothing. Gomez. Born in Cuba, the beloved Angel Scout was in baseball for over 50 years. An international presence who helped mentor Bartolo Colon, Kendrys Morales, as well as manager Mike Sosha. It's tough to put into words it's exactly how special this guy was, the passion he had for life, how much he loved this organization. Gomez passed away in 2009. Back out here at the Big A, it is 4 0 Oakland. Preston Gomez, near and dear to my heart. Oh, one of the best. I love for a long talking time. to him. Man, we can have a conversation forever just talking about baseball and life in general. Yep. Torrey Hunter to lead things off here in the bottom of the seventh. Fred Anderson with a couple of strikeouts, a couple of walks. Torrey ahead of the count at 2 and 0. Oh. Anderson falling behind here. Three balls and no strikes. Gave up the one out walk to Reggie Willits in the sixth inning. Went to third on the double by Sturis, but both guys stranded there. 
pitch is in there at three and one to Ibar. Bringing a fly ball to shallow left. And Bobby grounding out to third sharply. I think 3 0 was, was a tie game or one run deficit. He would have saw Torrey going, but you need base runners. And there's a leadoff walk. Now it's time for Coors Lake. Cold, hard blast. Last night, Alberto Cayaspo. It's a non sinking fastball. Turns on it. Hits his third home run of the season. The right center field followed up. Corey Hunter's blast to left center field. That was a Coors Lake cold hard blast. Second time this year that the Angels have gone back to back home runs. The previous time, April the 3rd, in Kansas City. Frankie ball outside. It's one ball, no strikes, and Suzuki's going to go out after watching Anderson here struggle with location. Very good through the first four innings. He's been very good throughout the game, but really, really good through the first four innings. Allowing just one base runner, but getting a little little bit away from his mechanics of the last two plus innings. Three walks have come since the fifth. Pretty close pitch to get the call. Two balls and no strikes. And there's that strike zone we were talking about, Paul and Howard strike zone. Though. It's a little it's been a little erratic, a little inconsistent on both sides. 2 0. 2 and 1. Well, you see that look by Kayaspo back. 1 0 pitch looked a little bit better than the 2 0 yeah. pitch, that's for sure. Alberto's 0 for 1. He struck out looking in the second inning, drew a walk, and was he raced in the fifth? Two one. This was shot into right field, a base hit. Torrey rounding second. He will stop there. Pennington almost gets Torrey walking back to the bag. Pretty nice play by Pennington. De Jesus' throw a little bit high. And the Angels have their first two men on here in the seventh. We had to go after him with the fastball. This time it was up. Hits the ball. It's the right way you want to go after him. Fastball away. You want to make sure you hit the ball the right. Otherwise, you roll it over to shortstop for a 6 4 3 double play. So, good job of hitting by Kayaspo. Pitching coach Ron Romanic out to the mound. We've seen so many ground balls from Brett Anderson today. He's been clutch in getting those, those ground ball outs in those pressure situations, but elevated one there. Great piece of hitting by Alberto, just inside out in that pitch to right. Well, like we said, that the, the success against Cahill yesterday was bringing that fastball up and send it down in the strike zone. Here's Mark Trumbo. Trumbo's 0 for 2. Chops one to third. LaRoche has it. Feeds Ellis for one. Relay to first. Two outs. Right back to swinging the pitch down, getting the ground ball. Torrey ends up at third base. Borge is stepping to the plate now. He's 0 for 2. Ground ball to first and a double play that he hit him to. Two double plays turned by the Athletics today. This one's rolled foul. Right-hander Joey Devine is loosening. He's slowed a little bit. 92 pitches thrown by Anderson. Little dribble up the third base line. That is foul. What good idea by LaRoche to go in there and feel that ball foul because that had a chance of rolling back into fair territory. Couple baseballs today alone to stay right along that line and stay fair. Right. 
Board just in the hole here. No balls, two strikes. That'll end the inning. Third strike out of the game for Brett Anderson. We played seven here at the Big A, and it's still 4 nothing Oakland. Yarrow, six and a third, 11 hits, four earned runs. Brett Anderson, seven innings, three hits, zero earned runs. And Andy LaRoche, two run double, season high, three runs batted in. And Decky Matt Stewart to lead things off here against Rich Thompson, followed by Kurt Suzuki and then Mark Ellis. Thompson came on with one out in the seventh inning and struck out Jackson and Willingham. Oakland stranding two base runners. In the inning. And so he takes high. It's one ball, one strike. Kadecki one for three. Base hit the run score to the second inning. A couple of fly ball outs since then. The Halos 0 for 4 with men in scoring position today. Oakland 2 for 6. One ball, two strikes. Hisanori Takahashi is up now. We saw him warming up a little bit last night in the seventh inning when Fernando Rodney hit Connor Jackson. Slow roller foul on the first base side. Count remains with one ball, two strikes. Good sequence so far by Rich. Opportunity to Pop a fastball away now to a good slow curveball. Oh, with that breaking pitch and a good one, but this is down and away. The 2 2. Foul back. Challenge with a fastball is 93. Well, that's good late life to that fastball. Matsui was on it, though. Fouled it straight back. And you got a guy pulling off the baseball right now. If he can go fastball down the way, should be able to get him to get at the very least get a ground ball out. Throw a breaking pitch instead here. Try to get him to swing over top of it. 
lays off that pitch. They wanted to peel, but didn't go. The three two. This one softly hit in the air to Asteris. There is out number one. So leadoff man retired and Kurt Suzuki will step to the plate. Thompson having faced three batters have retired all three. The Angels in the month of May. 11 and 13 coming into this one after a 14 and 12 April. It's still inconsistent, especially on the offensive side. Suzuki fouling it off. The Angels did not pitch quite as well as they did in April either. Angels staff sporting a 2.89 ERA in the month of April, and this month. At 3.93. It's almost like a carryover to the fact that you know, the pitchers aren't as aggressive from the fact that the offense has been struggling. Just missed outside. One ball, one strike. Suzuki's one for three with a base hit back in the second. Oakland had a, a 13 and 14 month of April. 10 and 13 in May. One and two. But everything bunched up in the American League West. Texas with the off day today. Could pick up a half game on the Angels. Should the Angels lose this game. Seattle is idle. Oakland could pick up a half game of the victories. Suzuki hits one in the air towards center. Borges is there. Two outs. Oakland came in in four, three back. Seattle the game and a half back. The Angels a half back. Texas. I think you're going to see at least three of these teams staying in and all the way till the end. Seattle's been a pretty good story as far as their pitching staff going, but I don't know if they have enough offense to sustain that competitiveness in the, in the race in this division, but the other three teams, they're not going to go away. It's going to be a great race all the way to the end. Ellis fouls off the first pitch for strike one. Look at the standings that we were just talking about. No one. Ellis, another foul off to the right. Quickly, no balls, two strikes. Bottom of the eighth inning for the Halos. Mathis Willits is Sturis, 8 9 and 1. Looks like Anderson will be coming back down for another inning. Down remains at no balls, two strikes. Rich coming after guys having retired. The first four he has faced. He's trusting the stuff on the mound. He's got excellent assortment of out pitches. Bottom line is when he feels comfortable and confident, he's going to get them out. One and two now. Pinier on the hook for this one. And come in with a 2 0 record. Three no decisions. Giving up that one run in the second, three in the fourth.
excuse me, check swing. He does a lot of guessing at the plate. Not only guessing the pitch, but location. Almost hit him. Ellis in the last year of his deal. Been able to get a hit today. Also had a sacrifice bundle, one for two game. Two balls, two strikes. The 2 2. Ellis hits one out toward left. Reggie is there. Mitch Thompson has himself a 1 2 3 inning. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Angels still trailing. Anderson throughout this game has been very consistent as far as dropping that curveball, getting the hitters off balance. Pops the fastballs when rush up there at 93 miles an hour, but shutout here into the bottom of the eighth inning for Anderson. It's three hits allowed with three walks. Here in the bottom of the eighth inning, setting up eight, nine, and one, Mathis Willits and his Sturis. The Halos got their first two men on base in the seventh inning. A walk to Torrey to single by Kayaspa, but the trumbo on the first pitch grounded into a double play. Borges struck out. Mathis today 0 for 2, a fly ball to right and a ground ball to short. Strikeout number four for Brett Anderson, the first out to start the eighth inning. The Halos have managed three hits in this one. A single by Eric Ibar in the fourth, a double by Sturz in the sixth inning, and that Kayaspo single in the seventh. No balls and a strike on Willis, who's 0 for 1, a ground ball to second. And had a walk in the sixth inning. Quickly at 0 and 2. Point is commanding the strike zone. 99 pitches, 68 of them have been in, in the strike zone.
One ball, two strikes. Thirty-three thousand four twelve on hand here at the Big A. The crowd throughout the seven-game homestand. Three against Atlanta, the four here against Oakland. It's Reggie didn't go around with the breaking pitch. Two balls, two strikes. A loss today would conclude this homestand. Four and three for the Angels. Split here against the Athletics. Which, all things considered, when you go back to a week ago Monday, you dropped a heartbreaker. The next innings to Oakland. Get swept in Oakland, get swept in Seattle. As Willits fouls another one off, still two and two. And you looked ahead at the schedule, you saw the Atlanta Braves coming in with Tim Hudson starting off the Friday night contest, and then Oakland rolling into town before they think it. The Angels could be in trouble. It's pretty good pitching coming into good town. Pitch. A lot of good arms. Well, it's chopping this one to LaRoche. Two outs, but as it goes, the Angels took two or three from Atlanta. And they've won two of the first three games here. And get a little bit of a of a break, even though you still got to play the game. You still got to win and score runs, but. Minnesota has been scuffling. Kansas City's been scuffling of late. Both of them not scoring a lot of runs. Both of them been a tough time keeping their guys healthy. Toward the hole in short, Pennington throws down to Sturis, and Anderson has another one, two, three inning. Eight the books here at the big A, and it's four nothing Oakland. To see every Angels game live or on demand on your computer as well as your favorite devices, MLB.TV Premium lets you enjoy HD quality, home and away coverage, multi game view, and the ability to pause and rewind live games. Visit Angels.com to order, get more details. MLB.TV Baseball Everywhere. Hisanori Takahashi comes into this ball game. Rich Thompson goes an inning and two thirds. All zeros for Rich. He had a couple of strikeouts. Takahashi to face eight, nine, and one. LaRoche, Pennington, and Crisp. Very solid effort by Rich Thompson. Takahashi trying to get that fastball back. 87 to 90 range in the fastball. Good sweeping curveball, slider, changeup. Isonori has not pitched since Saturday's game as well. 12 inning contest. The Braves won. Went one third of an inning in that game. Gave up a hit, struck out a man. Andy LaRoche today 
one for three. As he rolls this one over to third. Kiaspo's got it. There's out number one. The Roach with three runs batted in. Two RBI double in the fourth. But he's retired to start the ninth inning. Brings up Cliff Pennington, the shortstop. Pennington and De Jesus with multi hit games. Both of them with two knocks. Oakland racking out 11 hits, so all of them coming up against Pinheiro. It's not unusual for De Jesus to get a couple hits against the Halos. Coming in the game, 339 career batting average against Angel Pitching. One ball, one strike. Oakland has some action going in their bullpen, so perhaps Brett Anderson's not coming into the or coming back out. Right, Balfour is up. Well, if I'm Brett Anderson, I'm not real happy about not going back, especially after that last thing we got yeah. some easy ground ball outs. Still manageable pitch count. Pennington pulls this one, found it's one and two. Balfour is the de facto closer while Andrew Bailey is out with injury, and Brian Fuentes continues to sort things out. It's a four nothing game. Unless they're getting him up just in case the Angels get a couple of base runners on board. Yeah, I got to believe he's got a shot to put him out there to start the inning off. Two balls, two strikes. Pennington also picked up his 15th run batted in with his two singles. Full count. Little cue shot back to Takahashi. Kind of an interesting way to feel that ball. And it throws you off. You think the ball is going to be hit harder at you. It's a slow roller back up the middle. There's out number two. Almost looks like he's playing highlight. Got the Sesta on the right hand. He knew he had it all the way. Looked it into his glove. Have you ever been to a highlight match? You know I have. Maybe Maybe. Not. When I was down in uh, Florida. Florida, yep. The minor leagues. It's like, I think that's the only place it's ever been played. Oh, I'll tell you what, that thing that goes off the wall. That is a billion miles an hour, it seems to be. Outside, it's one ball, no strikes. Coco flipping one out towards shallow right. Tori Hunter is there. And Takahashi has a one, two, three inning. Way to the bottom of the ninth. The Angels down four nothing. Have Ibor, Abreu, and Hunter do up.
Nothing as we start the bottom of the ninth. Want to remind you that this week Fox Saturday Baseball is back in prime time as Torrey returns to Minnesota, leading the Angels against Jason Kubel and the Twins. This week's telecast on Fox Saturday Baseball in prime time begins at 4 p.m. Pacific. Brett Anderson is no longer in this game, which is a huge surprise to us up here. Just 105 pitches thrown. And an opportunity to go out there and get a, a complete game shutout. But instead, Bob Guerin with a 4-0 lead brings in his closer, Grant Balfour, who's just now made it out to the mound and beginning his warm-up toss. Hey, the big thing is, I mean, for the Angels right now, you're happy to see this happen. Even though Grant yeah. Balfour's got good stuff, he can rush his fastball 91-96, to 96, the curveball. And a changeup himself, but the reality is Anderson was throwing the ball exceptionally well. Anytime you change that momentum, you have, feel like you have a better chance to get back in the game and maybe possibly tie it here. Get some base runners because Anderson did a great job throwing that slow curveball. His slider was outstanding. He was in line to get his second career shutout, third career complete game. Not going to happen. Eight innings, four strikeouts, three walks, three hits, no runs allowed. Balfour pitching in his 23rd game. He has one save. This is not, of course, a save situation. 21 and two-third innings, 15 hits, 26 strikeouts, 11 walks. And he's scheduled to face two, three, and four for the Angels here. Ibar, Abreu, and then Torrey Hunter. Eric Ibar today, one for three, had a base hit back in the fourth inning. Spins around to hit from the left side. Oakland had made the decision to go to Balfour, but Balfour decided to take two or three extra pitches in the bullpen. That's why it took so long for him to come out here and actually get this bottom of the ninth going. Oh, one pitch inside. And it's one ball, one strike. And Balfour's a max effort guy as far as his fastball. Likes to throw the fastball probably around 85 to 90 percent of his pitches will be fastballs. Does have that good curveball and slider. 33 years of age. There's that slider down to the dirt. Two balls and one strike out of Sydney, Australia. Signed with the Minnesota Twins back in 97. Been with the Tampa Bay Rays since 2007. Last year, two and one record of 2.28 ERA, 57 games. Ivar rolls it down. It's two balls, two strikes. Alfred signing a two-year deal. There's Russell Brandon, newest member of the Angels organization. Talking with Howie. He's placed on the 15-day disabled list with that hamstring issue. Backdated, of course, to last week. Russell will be sporting the number 39. Calvin made to two, two balls, two strikes. Alfredo Griffin doing a good impersonation of a goalie having the, the puck go through the, the five hole. It's a nice move. It's Alfredo. As smooth as silk. Well, there's no question. As cool as the other side of the pillow. Another 2 2. Lays off of that one. Full count. Need some life. Need a base runner right here. Get that leadoff guy on. Eric Ibar, either a walk or base hit. Ibar grounds one through on the right side. There's a base hit. Leadoff man is on board to start the ninth. Got a 
fastball down. They did a good job as far as getting the bat head down. Stay back long enough. Didn't go out too far in front of that pitch. Important thing, get that leadoff base runner on. Second hit of the game for Ibar. Here's Bobby Abreu. He's probably the happiest that Brett Anderson is no longer in his game. Well, they hit one sharply the last time in the sixth inning. Over to the third baseman, LaRoche. Made a nice play on it. That came with a couple of men in scoring position. Abreu takes a strike at its 0-1. See many games in which you see a manager just make a decision, you know, just to take a pitcher out, thinking pitch count, but all of a sudden you change the, the thought process of your opponent. You feel better, even though, like I said Balfour's got very good stuff. Red Anderson was outstanding. Really kept the hitters off balance throughout the game. Bray didn't like the call on that last fastball. No balls, two strikes now. Anderson looking to pick up his third win. What a two. Two balls, two strikes. Bobby swings through the fastball. There's out number one. Balfour going up and away from Bobby. Challenge him upstairs. Four seam fastball. Pulling off that pitch also. Very difficult pitch for Abreu to hit when he's in that position as far as his follow through on the swing. High bar still at first. Here's Tory Hunter. 0 for 2 with a pop to second, a fly ball to right, and a walk. Foul that fastball straight back, 94 miles an hour. 0 and 1 to count. Balls, two strikes. <laughs> oh, two to Tory swings through the high fastball, two outs, back to back punch out now. Both high fastballs outside corner. Next one to Torrey Hunter. Balfour is not one of those guys. It's not going to come in your wheelhouse. He pitches even with a firm fastball. Stays away from your hot zone. And he likes to go up the ladder with his fastball. Ibar takes off for second in defensive indifference. Alberto one for two today. A strike out, a walk, and a base hit. <laughs> Trying to decide on the pitch here to four up the game with two outs. Man at second base. Throwing the ball 95 miles an hour.
0 oh, 1 pitch. Goes with a breaking ball. The count even now at one ball, one strike. Ibar started off this ninth inning with a base into right field, his second hit, and the fourth for the Angels. Again, Balfour going inside this time with a fastball. Two balls and one strike. Three and one now. I wonder if the situation, if Kiasco reaches, whether or not. Trumbo gets an opportunity, gets Balfour, the righty righty situation, or Branyan makes an appearance. We hold Branyan to Peter Borges. There's a walk. Now it looked like he wanted to call that a strike, but it's a walk, so there are two on with two outs here. Trumbo getting an opportunity here with Balfour. Went right with a fastball. As Suzuki reached back, but it looked like he got the inside corner. Kiasco gets the benefit of it. Now, all of a sudden, you got two guys on. And you're right. I'm, I'm sure if Trumbo gets on somehow, we might see Russell Brannion get a chance against Balfour. Mark's over three today. A pop up, a fielder's choice, and double play ball. Brandon with the helmet on. Trumbo swings through a fastball at 93 and it's 0 and 1. And again, staying away. Forcing the hitter to hit it to the big part of the ballpark. Dave Zuso was playing back by the warning track. Plenty of opportunity to make contact to get a base hit in front of him. Ground ball hits a high, towering shot to deep left center field. Coco Crisp at the wall. Gone! Three run, Jimmy Jack for Mark Trumbo. And it is a one run deficit. 4 3 Oakland. Boy, just like that, Trumbo crushes that ball. Daytime, you're always going to get some carry. Jumps all over this one. Fastball. Boy, is up and how quick his hands were. Home run number eight, RBI number 34 for Trumbo. Balfour not happy. Well, you're talking about perfect spot for a home run hitter. High fastball, right handed batters like the fastball up. Trumbo got one. Now we are going to see the newest angel. Peter Borges has been called back. Russell Brannion will get an opportunity here. Eighth home run of the year for Trumbo. Now a terrific job in getting those three runs batted in. Boy, what do we say about changing momentum? By just making the sake of a change sometimes. All of a sudden, it's just one swing away from a tie game. 24 runs batted in now for Trumbo. Here's Russell Brandon signed before the game. Brandon, 35 years of age, owner of 190 career home runs. Swings and hits one out to straightaway center field. Coco is back at the wall, makes the catch, and this game is over. Oakland wins the finale here, four to three. It's a series split. Russell Brandon, not a bad first swing oh, in an Angels oh. uniform. Boy, I thought he got that one. Especially with that first step or two going back by Coco Chris. I thought he might have tied the game up with that one swing. Brad Anderson picks up the victory. He's now three and four. Pinheiro takes the loss. 
He is down two to and one. Oakland wins it 4-3 from our Cubans and an entire crew here at the Big A. I'm Victor Rojas. We thank you for watching as always. And we invite you to stick around as Angels Live is coming up next.